This group coming to orders is Marine Private Albert A. Schmidt, who is a personal pain in the neck to the Japanese Army. He kicked those sons of heaven around plenty on Guadalcanal. How about giving us the lowdown, Al? Well, it happened on the morning of the 21st. It was between 1 and 2 o'clock, and Japs started to fire across the river. We quick jumped to a machine gun nest, and we, Johnny was on the gun, and they started to fire at us. And Johnny fired a few bursts, and a bunch of bullets came in there in the nest, and four of them hit Johnny in the face. He fell, and then I took over on the gun, and Diamond laid him aside the best he could. Then I started to shoot across the side, the other side of the river, and Diamond happened to spot a whole bunch of them coming across the river like a bunch of cattle. And he quick hollered to me, look down the river. I looked down the river, and I, all I could see was just the whole river full of them. So I started to shoot, and I just sprayed the water just the best I could, and it started to fall. And I shot a little time after that, and then the diamond was loading at the gun at the time, and diamond got shot in the arm just a few seconds before one of the Japs must have swum underwater across and threw a hand grenade in, and it hit the side of the machine gun and blew it up and blew me too. So I pulled out my pistol, and when I did that, I clicked the safety off, and Diamond turned his head towards me and said, Smitty, don't shoot yourself. I said, I'm not gonna shoot myself, Diamond. I said, I just pulled it out in case the Jap jumps in from the front or the back of the machine gun nest. I said, you holler to me and I'll start shooting. I said, I still got my right hand with you. Well, how many Japs did you get, Smitty? They tell me I got about 200 of them. Africa, this is the Aleutians calling. It doesn't look like much of anything up here, but while you've been pounding those Germans and Italians, we've been plenty busy with the Japs. Our outfit is on the Andrianov group of the Aleutians, halfway between Dutch Harbor and Kiska. The airfield puts our planes within fighter range of Kiska and easy bomber range of Atu farther west. And here are the bombers. Liberators and flying fortresses, the air arm of the United States forces and the Aleutians. They're loading up to give the Japs a little talking to in the only language they understand. Our flyers are veterans now, experienced in flying through some of the worst weather on Earth. In an hour, they'll be over Jap-held territory, giving their bomb sites a welcome workout. In the dim Aleutian dawn, one plane after another fills with its fighting crewmen. All set, let's go. Above, almost always, those pea soup clouds. Island after island in the Aleutian chain, which for years had been charted by innocent-looking Jap fishing boats. Approaching the island of Kiska, machine gunners are on the alert for action. A Nipponese warship is spotted. Without breaking from their course, our gunners strafe the deck. Bomb bays open silently on command. And here go American bombs hurtling toward the Jap base at Kiska. Several destructive fires are started. Another load, recorded by slow motion camera, drops toward the enemy below. This is getting to be so routine the Japs have written letters of protest to the folks back home. signs of their mission blazing behind them, the American air fleet wings over and heads for home. Are you in the from the Aleutians? I thought a fleet of United States B-17 and B-24 bombers took off from an advanced Aleutian base with Japanese installations at Kiska as objectives. Scattered enemy fire was encountered. 
One Japanese warship straight. High explosive and demolition bombs were dropped with success on objectives, and several fires were observed. All attacking planes returned safely to their base. Back home to the little patch of mud called Fireplace, with new notches on our guns. But we'll be out again tomorrow, a lot of tomorrows, paving the way for action which will include us and the Aleutians, you in North Africa, and other American forces throughout the world. Dear Adolf, it is given here in America with more Schweinerei. Kindly inform the Gestapo we need more spies immediately. Fui on that FBI. You think this is bad news? Here is even worse. Take a look at this flying machine. See how it swoops nice and graceful like it was an eagle in the sky. An eagle with a load of bombs for Dusseldorf. And maybe even Dietrich Garten, mein Führer. What is los here? What is with an airplane, with an umbrella, with a parachute? Surprise, Adolf. She is a toy. She is a miniature. She is something these ridiculous Americans use for training in anti-aircraft. In here they made them, and each model is a perfect reproduction of a big machine. That's the antenna, but connects with the radio on the ground where some dumb cop controls her. Now look, see a parachute so she could come down when she is shot? Look how he pushed the parachute on the plane. They are very careful people, these Yankee doodles. Everything here is in bunches. Here when they made one, they might count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this is very discouraging. Now comes the interesting part. This is the catapult that shoots the little baby plane in the sky. This army officer makes with a box and controls the whole works with the radio. Don't ask me how, Adolf. Now watch. Wait, wait, wait for the crash. Uh-uh. It didn't crash, Adolf. Chief and credit Adolf, take a look on these big bang guns. And take a look on how these men are trained. They're going to try to shoot down the little plane. Maybe they wouldn't hit it. Yes, I was wrong, Adolf. They hit it. Oh, my Führer, this is not appetizing for the Messerschmitts and the Volkermulls. Adolf, why don't we do something? <laughs>